we are here. Welcome to the International Schools Esports League. Final or grand finals are here, and we are all super excited for this game. This is going to be a wonderful match between the uh, Frankfurt International School on the blue side. The first match is going to be on the blue side, and then Anglo American School of Sofia is going to be on the red side. The winner of this uh, match will carry the title of the champion for the uh, International Schools Esports League Fall Season 2022. And before we start, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a history of what happened in the past to give you a better picture of what awaits us today. So let's quickly look at the spring, what happened last year and where those teams were one year before. All right, so uh, that's the that was the the, uh, the season that happened one year ago in spring 2021, and um, Anglo American School of Sofia didn't play that season, but Frankfurt International School was there, and they ended up on the second or they landed on the second place. So um, they've been with us for quite some time, and uh, when we are held our fall league 2021 let's quickly look at the bracket what happened then yeah that that's the our bracket for the fall the previous uh, season and we can see the Franco international school scored the first place so they are the actual current champions uh, of our of our minecraft capture the flag league and the Anglo-American School of Sofia is going to challenge them. This is the first time they are uh, playing this league and they are going to challenge them. And I would like to begin by joining, uh, joining their Discord and just basically touching base with them around what it is that uh, what the preparation what the preparation looked like for them. So we're going to join their Discord now and hear from them. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if we can join the Discord. Hello, AS team, can you hear me? Yes. All right, wonderful. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the f grand finals. You've made it. This is your first time, and you are here already. So I think that deserves a round of applause already. You're a brand new team, and, and you made it to the, to the final. So bravo to you. You did a wonderful job. And before the game, I just want to hear about what it was, uh, what the preparation for this game looked like for your team. Yeah, uh, I can answer that. So, for like the past month, for, for this entire season really, we've been doing bi-weekly practices and then uh, two other weeks, some at school, some at home, so that everybody feels comfortable in going to practice and stuff. And um, a lot of it, what we do when we're in practice together is practice runs, making sure we know how to perform our strategies correctly and effectively as fast as possible. And when we're out of practice, we have a big Discord server where we communicate and build upon our strategies when we're not sort of physically together or in a Discord call. So, yeah, mm. that's, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. And so I, 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 don't, I don't want you to reveal your strategies, but I was in the chat with your with a coach um, and you guys came out with some wonderful strategies. And I wonder... Uh, whether you will be able to execute them um, as well as you did it in practice. So, any final words to your opponents, the Frankfurt International School, before we launch the game? I mean, um, we've seen their matches, and we know that they're very good opponents, and uh, we wish them very good luck, and yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish you all yep. the best. I wish you all the best. I'll jump to the Frankfurt International School now to hear about them. From Thanks. <laughs> so okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, see you later. All right, we are now going to join the Frankfurt International School and uh, have a little chat with them before the game starts. Uh, one second. Hello, uh, hello, Frankfurt team. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. They're hey, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well, first of all, I just want to congratulate you guys to 
for making this to the finals the third time in a row. You've been the champions last time and you've made it to the finals in the uh, one year ago. And now you are being challenged by the uh, very powerful school. So I wanted to, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear um, your thoughts and, and what was the preparation for this match look like from your end? We sort of just focused on taking what the things that worked well from the, the previous strategies that we used and refining them to make sure that just that we just focus on the things that worked well and try to strip away the things that didn't work so well. Right, okay. I remember one time, I think it was your team that used the TNT in one of the matches. Was it wasn't wasn't that your team? I think we did try it one time. It, it might have been in a practice game. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you. I just want to wish you all the best in the in the uh, in the series. Uh, we are looking forward to the great match and all the best. Thanks. Thank We're so much. excited. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. So let's jump back to the lobby. All right. So because this is a special match. Uh, we want to make it a little bit more special for the viewers as well. And I'm very uh, proud and, and honored to invite um, a co-host with me. Uh, this is Mr. Michael. He is a head innovation teacher at Herzlea from South Africa. Their team is also participating and he will be on the call with me and help me co-commentate this match. We'll join the call now and let him uh, maybe introduce uh, himself to the audience. Now, Michael, are you with us? Can you, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, wonderful. All right, uh, Michael, you are here. Um, so uh, just before we start, just a couple of words about your history with this game so the viewers can understand your perspective. Yes, so uh, Minecraft actually started for me uh, as part of my university studies, and that's how I came, up, uh, came across it. And ever since then, I've absolutely loved integrating it into our school. And so eventually we became part of the Minecraft League. Um, and yeah, we also first time uh, team playing uh, in the league. So very, very excited to be commentating with you this afternoon. All right, fantastic. So we have two pairs of eyes making sure that we don't miss anything because this is the final. These are the two strongest teams in the league. So uh, make sure that we capture everything. If I'm missing something, I'll uh, please make sure to, to cover that as well. Brilliant. Looking forward. Okay. All right, fantastic. So let's jump into the game now. <laughs> All right, so the game is about to start. We have about 20, 25 seconds. And um, so Michael, um, in your practices with the team, so what do you think is the most important part in the first few minutes of the game? What has been the most important part? Yeah, so I mean, defense is extremely important. Uh, without defense, you leaving yourself open to attack. Um, and as we saw, both of these teams are extremely good. Uh, in the offense, so you really want to make sure that you've got a brilliant defense early on in the game. Yeah, and this is exactly what is happening. Like you said, the defense is, is very important. We can see the Anglo-American School of Sofia is defending really well ag against the Frankfurt International School. Um, really Germany leading an attack there. Yeah, they're, they're just... Try. Yeah, I think they're about to capture the flag now. I can see one player get to the base, but he, he's having a really hard time. He's taking down. At Frankfurt International School, actually, they, they rushed their opponents, most of them in their matches, and they scored the first point within the first minute, and I think this is wha exactly what is happening now. Absolutely. And you can see A is banding together, working together as a team, fending off the FIS. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, they. I think I don't think they've lost any members of their team yet. They were just bending together and just taking the um, Frankfurt International players one by one. So it's interesting that tactic of putting pressure onto the other team, um, and I guess it depends on how they actually react uh, that determines the early game and who scores the first point. Yeah, yeah, but listen, um, I'm also happy that the AS uh, did their homework and they kind of anticipated this immediate rush from the Frankfurt International School because they've been doing this quite a lot. And I was I was happy to see that AS was kind of ready for that. But like you said, they band together and they anticipated that and they fanned off pretty successfully. Absolutely. It looks like uh, AS is infiltrating the FIS base. Let's see how FIS is going to respond. 
Yeah, yeah, I can see one player. And I don't, I don't, I think he's still unnoticed by other players because I can see, I, I don't see any response from the from the FIS. There's one player in the basement, uh, one red player is in the basement, and he's not crouching. I mean, he's visible, but there's still no uh, response from the uh, FIS yet. I see one player in FIS guarding the flag. Let's see if that's going to be enough to stop AAS from taking that flag. Yeah, yeah. It's I interesting that uh, ladder is still there uh, in the FIS base, uh, usually an easy escape route. So uh, I've seen teams actually destroying that early on. So it's interesting FIS uh, leaving it there for now. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Most most teams I've seen in the past games, they destroy their ladder and then use it in the offense, but FIS decided to, to leave it there. I've also noticed that one of the players from, I think from the red team is trying to capture the pillager outpost. I've seen one player, but maybe he was taken down by the Vindicator. So the Anglican American School of Sophia, they've uh, practiced, I believe, uh, defeating this pillager outpost and really using that uh, in their advantage. Uh, so, very interesting strategy to see, and they look like there's a midfield battle going on, 1v1. Let's see who's going to grab that. Ah, A is successful. And like Michael, like you said, uh, uh, the AS uh, Sophia did practice a lot, and we can see one of the players, student, uh, student 12 or student 7, is exactly the player who captured the pillager outpost last two games and now they're struggling a little bit last time the student seven was able to capture the pillager outpost with the first attempt they didn't fall down once so let's see if they're able to capture it one more time and i will be hanging around here to see what the loot is there so they captured they've taken down the first two floors and now they've been contested by student 14. Uh, so student 14 from from the fis is there and we're going to see a little skirmish on the third floor. And yep, um, yep FIS. Like FIS took that one. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was good response by, th by them as well. Brilliant. AS coming to get the villagers outpost back. Let's see how far they're going to get. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that the, the teams finally see the prospects of getting the pillage outpost that was essentially the design of the map to to make it in such a way that the pillage outpost is a neutral objective that is fought over by both teams and we can see the last mob is going to get down and the AS captures the pillage post one more time they got the golden sword they have quite a good loot really it's not the best one but it's not the worst one they got they have a um, handful of pill of of and the pearls, they have some materials that they can use to craft armor and swords. So yeah, good job for the uh, for th th for the team. They were able to do that within five minutes. So bravo for them. Excellent. And I mean, as we know, the pillagers outpost can give you just that small advantage you need in terms of the armor and the weapons uh, to overpower the other team. So let's see what they uh, use that for and how successful they will be in actually launching an attack. So it looks like FIS is trying to uh, approach the AS base again. Let's see if they are able to get inside and get to that flag. Yeah, yeah. And I listen to be honest with you, Michael. I don't, I don't recognize FIS a little bit. Most of the time, they are hyper aggressive team. They like they spare no effort, just attacking the base uh, one after another. Though this time, I think. They're put. They're playing ra rather reservedly. They spend. I mean, they send one or two players, but it's not their style. I'm not. I mean, I'm used to another different style, and I'm just following two. Uh, I'm following two red players uh, who capture the pillager outpost. I anticipate an action happening on their end now. Yeah. So, never underestimate that armor that uh, the AS player is having the and able to use. Uh, in a 1v1 match. So let's see where student seven is getting up to. Yeah, it also a little bit risky. I agree one on one is a good scenario, though it's also a little bit risky to carry such available items, right? Because if you if you fall down, there's no one there's no one there to pick it up, really. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we've seen that with previous games yeah. where students actually lost that very precious loot. Uh, and then unfortunately, the other team was able to use that against them. Uh, so yeah, that is absolutely a key there, uh, not to lose that loot and the armor.
Yeah. And I anticipate, again, going by the Student 7, they do have the Ender Pearl, and they're taking a lot of damage now. Student 7 is taking lots of damage from the Archer, and I think <laughs> and this is exactly, Michael, what we just described, we right? Yeah. He got stuck in this little... I mean, how important was that spider web, wasn't it? Uh, absolutely. But I see AAS is banding together again, trying to get that loot back. Uh, let's see. Uh, one player did manage to actually get inside, going for the flag. Now that student 9 captures the flag, and unfortunately, student 11 got to him first. Yeah, and that was... Nice that, save yeah, and that could have been a, a, a really fateful moment for both teams because we only see one player who is alive for the I mean we can see two players but it's only one player so had red team or had AS won this one on one they would have captured the flag and also got back the precious loot they got from the pillager outpost absolutely yeah and unfortunately now for AS it is now in the hands of FIS uh, Germany team so uh, let's see if uh, the Anglican American, ah, they captured the flag. Yeah, and, and Student the 7. Right, the Student 7. And he's just demonstrated a wonderful movement. I'm not sure if you captured that, Michael, but he was able to capture the flag. He went up and then he jumped from all the way from the small tower all the way to the fence. And now he's going to score the point. So this is going to be the first point of the game. Uh, well, they still need to get to their flag, which is very good protected. I mean, all the are they going to jump from the top? Yeah, they will jump. They might. Yeah, they jump from the top, and this is going to be the first point for the um, AS Sophia. Well done. Uh, they lost everything, but they, they captured the, the flag, and they just captured another point, um, another another flag. And I'm not sure what is happening, but he just got away scot free. Student A just bypassed three players without taking any damage. Yeah, so th that's the clever thing about the AS team is they always have a backup player waiting there. So as soon as mm. the one flag has been captured and scored, uh, the other player is ready to capture another flag straight away um, while FIS was still distracted. So excellent strategy, excellent teamwork we're seeing there from AES. Yeah, yeah, the coordination they have is really, really great. I can see that one player left the game, so I just want to make sure that it's not a field player that left the game and both teams have five players. So the point is scored. Well done for the for the AS. This is the second point and then now they have a two point lead. Um, just want to make sure that because student 13 left and um, previously we had a problem where a field player leaves and there's no one to substitute them. Just want to make sure that. Um, so while you're checking that out, Evgeny, I see there's some action in the FIS base. Um, FIS really trying to defend their flag. Um, although their base is now left uh, largely unattended. And two players from AAS now has slain the last player defending the FIS base, getting that valuable armor back. Let's see if FIS can respond in time. Ooh, I see there's some diamond armor, and that looks like an FIS player. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, um, and and yeah, he, this player just emerged from from nowhere, and they they are wearing uh, what looks like the full diamond suit and a diamond a diamond sword as well. So, uh, what I've also noticed uh, is the escape route is extremely important. So, blocking off all vulnerable points, um, making it difficult for the other team to escape, uh, is also an extremely important part of actually protecting your own flag. And without that, it becomes easy for the other team to run off of the flag, scoring uh, multiple points before you can eventually stop them. I see if I is uh, demonstrating some brilliant defense there and they're now off going to the AAS base. Let's see, do they have the armor, the weapons, everything good to go? Let's see. Brilliant, brilliant. That player in the diamond armor, he is showing his prowess. And red team captures another flag. Yeah, while well, if I is no. Yeah, the bl I mean, they were between the hard pl hard place and the rock. And student again, student ten, they just they just bypass the entire team. They don't engage in any fights. They just just run through without taking any damage. Though it would have taken what three hits from the diamond sword. 
if it's three zero four. And uh, I'm also, have you seen this uh, coordinated archer attack? Um, okay. No, absolutely. Archery is really something that can count in your favor, um, especially in ranged attacks. And I see AAS uh, skillfully doing that stealth uh, attacks on the FIS flag, capturing it and getting them two points already out of the three. We see a midfield skirmish happening here. Both teams now deciding to go on the offense and go for a head-on attack. And that play in the diamond armor, he is still standing strong. Sorry, I'm just FIS trying coming to... coming in to support the player. I'm just trying to save our... Um, the team, there's one player, one player is down from the uh, FIS. And I just want to make sure that they have five players. Yes. Just technical, <laughs> technical issue. I'm happy, Michael, that you can pick up and uh, just commentate while I'm trying to see that, make sure that Frankfurt has our uh, five field players. Got you covered. It looks like FIS is launching a very strong attack. Uh, two players that has got serious armor, uh, giving them a very good advantage uh, in the head on attack that's been launched and it looks like the AAS has launched another stealth uh, attack on that red flag, uh, capturing the blue flag, sorry, uh, and heading back to the base. Um, let's see if blue team can stop them. Two players now, blue team that has got diamond armor. Um, it seems like they are ready for action uh, and a lot of action indeed taking place midfield um, with the FIS team getting very close now to red base. Uh, and heading for that flag, trying to score their first point. Yeah, and it was really gradual attack, right? They, they, the blue team, they, they want to attack, but then the, the flag is captured. And I like that. I like that the red team was not sparing all five players to defend. And now we can see the wall is getting down. The two players who's wearing diamond also have pickaxes. And now the flag is still not captured. Uh, it will now. Yeah, here we go. The flag is captured now. So I think the biggest question on my mind is, with only around eight minutes remaining, will FIS be able to um, leverage the armor and the, the stuff they have to defeat and, and get back into the game? They need to score at least four points to win the game. I think FIS has got a serious advantage, although one of the players has just been taken down. Uh, and that means that the AES team will now have uh, an advantage with the FIS armor. Uh, so it will be a very interesting showdown in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, five game. minutes. Five minutes remaining. Yeah, five minutes remaining. And the player that was taken down, he did not, I mean, the diamond, the two diamond players are still there and the red team captures the flag moment time. It's not like we see, th and this is the beauty of the AI strategy. It looks like they have one player who's constantly running back and forth, student eight. Uh, I think this is the same player, and they're just scoring the one point after another. And we can still we still see them carrying their flag, though. Whether or not, I don't think they're gonna make it, uh, because the um, the blue team occupies the base, and the player is taking down indeed. Some brilliant defense there by the FIS team. Uh, let's see if they can actually utilize these last precious uh, minutes to score another two or hopefully three points. Uh, which will then give them that victory. Yeah, and listen, I think even if our FIS, the, if they can score one more point, which is going to happen now, I think, if they can bring this flag back and even the score, even if they run out of time and the game is brought into the uh, overtime, I mean, we can. S they still they're very powerful now. They have two, fl and it's it's yeah, it's three three now. So the Anglo-American School of Sofia are in a really difficult position right now. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, even though they are, uh, I have to say that they are giving it 110% in terms of trying to defend the base, not giving up, although the armor that the blue team has really giving them that yeah. advantage that they need. Hey? Yeah, they're just smashing through all the players. They destroyed every possible obstacle the gates are gone completely the uh, defense around the flag is gone entirely 
So yeah, that strategy definitely definitely paid off, and maybe they timed it. Maybe they approximated that. Listen, if we can get two diamond uh, sets of armor and swords by 15 minute mark, we still have five minutes, and we can just run back and forth. Um, and yeah, I think I think they're gonna score that crucial point for their team now. That's interesting. I'm just looking at the frags very quickly. Red team 32, blue team 45. As uh, so a blue team, clearly they. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, uh, yeah. I, I agree with you. And even with that, without that, the blue team just scored the point. The red team tries. I've just seen the players trying to, to get the flag, but it's really hard. It only takes two or three hits from the diamond sword um, to get. And we can just see one player. <laughs> I like how they always leave the the blue team always leaves one player behind to just destroy the remainder of the wall surrounding the red flag. Uh, so, I mean, once that defense around your flag is gone, it becomes incredibly difficult uh, to keep up the defense. But that being said, uh, if you can get that armor back from your other team, uh, then the, you are in a very powerful position again. So let's see if the FIS team can actually hang on to the armor for the last couple of minutes. Yeah, well, they have the two point lead advantage and the FIS they don't even have any resources to any uh, we can see one player is sneaking back so lots of damage is taking place but it's it's really really tough they're trying to armor them they're trying to you know hit them with bows but then yeah it's really tough like two players that just devastated the entire team entirely and that was I think that was the best attempt that the um red team had they had two archers on the roof and the the players the the fis players did take lots and lots of damage but that was not enough uh, so clearly that mining strategy fis is perfected uh really counting in their favor now helping them to dominate this last part of the first game in the finals yeah but the question is how like now when we are heading into the second game how do you think the uh, the uh, sofa should respond to this two i mean if they can do it once i mean yes the the fis will be on a different side they will be on the red hand side but how would they counter this mining strategies and two emerging guys with diamond swords yeah good question so mining takes time and i think uh is can play very aggressive so i think it will count in their advantage if they play aggressive early on mm -hmm. uh, to get that major lead um before fis gets all their armor uh, and gets ready for the attack yeah yeah i think i think that's really the the only way you can counter the mining strategy because the now the difference in score is four points if you can use that 15 minutes to just play hyper aggressively and get those advantage then they might be able to counter that, but the first game goes to the FIS. It's one to zero. It's best of three. So th we still need to, they need still need to do one more game. So we're gonna take a short break and then we'll launch the second game. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a, sh in a, in a five minutes. <laughs>
All right, final preparations before we head into the second game. Just making sure that everybody has the right permissions and we are good to go. Okay, just final things. All right, Michael, are you there? Hi, ah, yes. Okay, good. All Ready right. for round two. Yeah, I think we are. So just uh, waiting for both captains uh, to give me green light to start. And we are good to go. So with switch sides, uh, now we have Frankfurt International School on the red. Uh, on the red side, and we, can, we have Anglo-American School of Sofia on the blue side. Just waiting the final go, uh, final yes from the blue team, and we will be ready to start. So I just clear the inventories of all players to make sure that we uh, we level the play playing field so no ar arrows um, being hoarded by either of the team. And we are ready to start. And let's do it. All right, game two is here, everybody. Game two is here. This is International Schools Esports League. This is the second game. Frankfurt International School is on the red side this time, and the Anglo-American School of Sofia is on the blue side. Um, blue side is actually preferred when we flip the coin, and most of the time, eight out of 10 times, the teams want to be on the blue side because probably of the proximity to the cave. All right, anyways, let's head into the game now. Yeah, it's interesting, Evgeny, if you go down in the red uh, base, uh, you actually get to a whole uh, mob of uh, zombies. So you definitely don't want to go down the red base. <laughs> yes, giving that you that advantage in the blue base. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. And this is exactly, we've seen a uh, rush from the red team. One of the players is taking down. We, we've seen three players from the red team attacking the base of the Anglo-American school of Sofia one more time. And they defended really well one more time. Um, I think both all players, the blue team captured the point. How did that happen? Wow. Still see that blue flag there. How did the Let's fourth player got to, I didn't see them crossing the map at all. Ah, How there we go. Yeah, coming back to base. Yeah, an excellent sneak and stealth attacks there by the blue team. How did they get there? Completely I have have you seen have you seen the red the the blue team crossing the map at all if i'm not mistaken they really utilize that back end of the base uh, oh. and sneak through there and sometimes they also use that large tower in the front uh and stealth fully going through there as well wow that was really quick i haven't seen i've, I've seen three players from the red team from the fis attacking the uh, the blue base, and I was so surprised to see that the red flag is captured. So bravo for the Anglo-American School of Sofia. They maybe learned their lesson from the first game, and they're just going full speed a in th at the early stages of the game to counter that devast devastating uh, mounting or mounting crafting strategy. Oh. Student 2 just captured the flag, and they are running really, really quickly. They're taking a lot of damage, and I think they just fell into, their, into the peat. I've noticed that they... They dig the hole there in the hope that some of the players will fall down. Though that was a good attempt, though that that, that could have been the second point for the blue team. Uh, and uh, that's the thing: is making use of every single opportunity uh, and scoring those points early on really get to that advantage. Um, and I've noticed that uh, the door is just been repaired in the red team space, um, and that door obviously a very important entry point into any team space. Right, correct. Thanks for pointing that, Michael. I also noticed that the blue team has only one player, I mean, one player on the defend, defense, one player leading the attack. So three of the players from the FIAS team are missing. So whether they went... Oh, the pillager outpost has been defeated as well. This is a wonderful execution. We haven't seen what, what's there, but student nine captured the pillager outpost. I wonder if the... AS team could utilize the ender pearls 
that uh, are that are w- some of among the things you get when you take down the pillager outpost. Uh, the, the speed at which this game is uh, developing is amazing. I can see uh, two red players entering the blue base again, uh, trying to get to that flag, uh, but unfortunately they were defeated. Uh, blue defense still holding up. Yeah. So in the meantime, I've just noticed seven students seven are um, exploiting the mine right there, and this is exactly why the blue side of the map is so loved by the uh, players or teams that do mining strategy because you have the mine right there. And I remember almost two years ago when LF and Y, the um, f- the school from New York, developed that strategy. The, the first time we've seen the the diamond, I think it was a diamond sword at that time. They they were on the blue b- blue side. Um, I can see a blue team trying to infiltrate from the side here. Uh, one player uh, has got a nice uh, iron armor there. Looks like he's also got a crossbow, enchanted crossbow, uh, giving the blue team a serious advantage to infiltrate red base early on. Yeah, yeah. The bl- the uh, I think the Anglo American school really mastered uh, the pillager outpost capture. Uh, that I've, I've spoke to their team and it looks like the dedicated one player who, who's, whose main purpose is to, you know, skillfully and masterfully capture the flag, capture the pillager outpost, and this is exactly what happened. And uh, for, for now, it looks like the game develops in a similar fashion as the first game, though we have see what... I just want to quickly look at the blue team's base and what is happening there. We can see lava being thrown down on the flag interesting i'm wondering what their intention is i'm guessing so the other team cannot escape although i see some water being poured over uh casting that in stone interesting strategy yeah yeah so basically i think that's i mean the intention was to craft uh maybe a cast like an i'm not sure i think something is not working out i think the intention was to build um a stone cast around it and I think this is what they're after one more time. Yes, yes. So uh, just to remind everyone, around the flag, uh, there is a no-build zone. And so I think that is why the stone is not forming around that flag, uh, so that players can still access the flag. So let's see. Yeah, they're forming. Very interesting to see all the water. Okay. The flag is still barely visible. I mean, the flag is there, but I think, I mean, how, how are you going to capture this flag now? Yeah, no, this is amazing defense. I've got to give that wow. to the team. Wow. Excellent look, defense. <laughs> look at that. This is probably the best defense we've seen so far. I mean, think about it, Michael. You cannot build or destroy in the flag area. So once you capture the flag then you have to destroy the stone blocks around it, right? There we go, exactly. I've just seen a blue player um, flying in with um, a ender pole, um, and he is now in possession of that red flag. Now, just trying to figure out how he's actually going to get to his blue flag uh, is now the question. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But listen, I think at this, yeah, I think at this point, okay, they found a, <laughs> they found a point Brilliant. to score the point. Wow. But I think at this point, it doesn't really matter. I think at this point, it doesn't really matter because they have three points and it's practically impossible for the red team to cap. <laughs> Look at this. Ca- you can bear, you cannot even see the flag. You cannot even see yeah, that it. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely amazing defense strategy. Well done. Wow. This is probably the first time. I mean, I'm saying they're going to win because I, unless... I don't know how, unless the red team pour the uh, lava on top of it and then rescue, but unless they, I mean, I don't know how you can counter that. And this is probably, if they win, if the blue team wins this, this is going to be the first time when a team wins the match through the defense strategy. We've seen, uh, you know, very, very, a lot of ingenious offensive uh, strategies but this is the first time we've seen an, a defense strategy as um as novel as this one and they're still able yeah. to score the point no, excellent excellent uh, so I'm, i've seen 
three uh, blue players entering the red base, uh, stealing the flag again. But it does look like uh, the red team is now taken back control of their base. Uh, that have defeated those blue players and they're trying to defend their flag now. Probably while the other player or players are busy mining, getting those very valuable diamond armor and sword. Yeah, but at the same time, what are you going to do with this? I mean, what are you going to do with this diamond? Uh, yes, you can slay the entire AS team, but what then? I mean, the objective of the game is to capture flags and bring them back. Exactly. So if the red team is able to get uh, their diamond armor in time, they could probably still turn this around. Uh, blue team coming in at four points at the moment. However, if they score a couple of more points before the uh, red team comes in with the diamond armor, I think the blue team might just take this one. Okay. Uh, I just want to see <laughs> the reaction of the blue team. I'm not sure if the red team is watching the live stream because we haven't seen uh, the red team infiltrating the blue base but i think once they do they will be like oh my god what is this where is the flag <laughs> that's something i've never seen before excellent defense strategy there yeah it this... looks like blue team is as very being very persistent constantly trying to infiltrate the red base uh, i don't see many defenders in the red base um, let's see if they can protect their flag long enough to give that uh, minor chance to get the armor back to them yeah we, well we see can we well i can see consistently our uh, three players on the red side so they are they're doing their best so the two players i think i think the uh the fis really went with the same strategy with the same mining strategy they have their miners um two of the player and we should expect them to emerge at around 15 minute mark though they're on a different side of the map though uh but still 10 minute remaining the blue is leading with four point lead a devastating strategy that ah, this is amazing this is genius really and listen uh -huh. we've been playing this i mean according to the rules of the game we spoke with them um, uh, with the coaches before the only requirement i set is the only thing off that is completely prohibited is the pr preventing the natural spawn of players if there is a spawn that you're good to go and that does not violate the rule and uh, yeah, and, and I'm just, again, curious to see what's going to happen when the FIS develop their or complete their mining strategy. We will see two diamond, I guess, players. Uh, but the four-point lead is allotted with with, few, with less than 10 minutes remaining. Exactly, yeah, that, that is a big advantage. Um, uh, if you scroll over to the blue base, um, you'll see the base was on fire. And I'm guessing that is probably a consequence of the lava uh and the water being poured so of course uh, the lava defense strategy not without its consequences uh leaving the blue base uh largely burned down <laughs> and you see this is exactly like we now have the blue team or oh, sorry the red team um they have two guys wearing diamond but they can't really get to the flag you can't they're really struggling I mean, there's technically not possible to get to the flag. You cannot mine around the flag. The area is protected. Yeah, you see, Evgeny, that's exactly the beauty of the strategy is it stops those incredibly powerful diamond players, as you can see, uh, from actually getting to the flag, giving uh, the blue team enough time to respond and to defend. So let's see if they can hold up their defenses. Wonderful. It looks like red team is dominating there in the blue base, although blue team is trying to fend them off. Uh, it looks like the fences are still holding. It is impossible to mine. Of course, it's in the protected area. Uh, but listen, let me ask you this, Michael. Can you place a dynamite and blow them off? You can, right? Uh, if it's in the protected area, then I think nothing can destroy those blocks, to be honest with you. So I'm just, I mean, I'm just curious because I just want to um, make sure that this is a legitimate strategy because, mm. yeah, it is a protected area. I mean, you, if it were completely protected, then it would not have been possible to mine, to place even cobblestone. So I think, and I'm going to test it out uh, at the end of the game. I think if you place dynamite, it's going to, I mean, it's a natural destructor and I think it's going to destroy all the cobblestone. 
I mean, you cannot yourself destroy the blocks, but other natural things like dynamite or lava should do that. Uh, so I see the AAS coach said that they do know a way to get in there and to get to the flag. So it looks like it is possible. Um, and I know if you go into your world builder status, you will also be able to get in there. Yeah, but they're not in the world builder status. I think, I, I mean, in my opinion, the way I see it, and this is, I mean, this is what the finals should be about. We should see outrageous things happening, like two players in diamond armor not being able to get to the flag. And this is exactly what should be happening in the finals. And I, I'm guessing, and I, I think I'm, 99% positive that you can counter that by having dynamite, which FIS did do. Dynamite won't work. Um, well, uh, still, I mean, we cannot really, we cannot really do much because you can lead a creeper there. I think this should, this could work. Um, but other than that, it's, it's. Uh, It's really interesting to see the, the team fight happening now uh, within the blue base, um, desperately trying to get to that flag uh, as the red team has still got absolutely zero points, um, trying to score a point. But so far, they're still unsuccessful. Blue team's defense is holding strong. So it wow. looks like there are some strategies, uh, although it is definitely not easy to get to that flag now. So I'm just, <laughs> because this is unprecedented time that no one has ever done it before. So I'm just trying to make sure that this is a legitimate strategy and we're just confirming that the TNT blows up the newly made cobblestone. And I agree, the TNT will blow the cobblestone that has been formed on top. The base will be in place because this is a deny block. So the TNT will not interfere with the deny block. Okay, brilliant. So just the blocks that have been placed there by the lava. And Correct. The water, yeah, so brilliant. this yeah. is this is a counterable strategy. You just need to have a TNT block. But listen, the blue team also <laughs> spent considerable time finding lava, getting the buckets and bringing it back, right? So it's not that they just, you know, show up with buckets of lava in their hands at the spawn. So they also developed their strategy and there was a risk involved as well, right? They, I mean, they set their entire base on fire. Look at that. I mean, this is incredible, right? They have their base completely destroyed, but this is off the question. They have their players walking around with no armor, but this is off the question. I mean, you know, that reminds me of the Sun Tzu art of war. If you want to make yourself invincible, just go somewhere where your enemy cannot reach you, right? So no matter how powerful your enemies are, if you <laughs> if they cannot reach you and the, the red team cannot reach the flag, it doesn't really matter now. The blue team can just, you know, they can, you know, go have a cup of tea because the blue team, the red team, sorry, cannot get to the flag. This is incredible. Okay. Exactly, exactly. And um, to add to that, I think I saw about three lava buckets and three water buckets being poured down before uh, the flag was uh, fully covered. So I, I agree with you there. An ingenious strategy there by the uh, blue AAS team to yeah. defend the flag before red team comes up with the diamond arm. And we can see the benefits of this now. Yeah, correct. And and it didn't work the first time. I mean, if you we, you and I were there where they start to putting the lava down and uh, for some reason the cobblestone didn't work, so they had to do it multiple times, which also gives another team an opportunity to maybe take down that player and maybe take away the lava. So it's it's a very powerful strategy and going into the w I think we are going to have the third game and I just want to see what's going to happen if they I mean, there's nothing stopping them. Uh, th there's nothing stopping the AS team from doing the strategy one more time. So the FIS needs to be ready with, I don't know, a TNT to blow the whole thing up or to prevent everything happening from the get-go. Yeah, no, it, it looks like those are the only two ways to get to the flag right now, uh, with very little time left getting either Creeper in there, uh, which is going to be very difficult, or getting TNT, uh, which might be even more difficult. So. 
yeah, a lot of pressure now on the red team to quickly respond and to get some explosives uh, onto the blue flag. It looks like there's some interesting uh, archery happening at the red base. Um, they are also trying to defend to their base while at the same time trying to get to the blue flag. So a lot of pressure now on the red team to respond uh, before time runs out. Yeah. Now this is a really hard call, Michael, for for like the judge to make whether or not it's a legitimate strategy. I still think it is. I mean, the players can spawn. Um, yes, you went. I mean, yes, you went and die and and get the diamond uh, swords and armor. But that this is not what you need in this match, right? So it's like a it's like yeah. a game of chess, right? You can you bet on powerful armor and swords. You were prepared to fight. Whereas another team said, you know what, we're not going to fight with you. We're going to do that. And that wins the game, right? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, there is still a way, even though it's very difficult now for the red team to get to the blue flag. There is still a way. So uh, I agree with you. I think it's still a legitimate strategy, uh, a very creative, very intelligent yeah. strategy. So that. and just to make sure, just to make sure that this is a legitimate strategy. So what's going to do what we're going to do when the game ends now? Uh, I'll give the creative rights to the players and let them try and blow this thing off. Uh, because even if they have creative mode, if they're not world builders, they can still not uh, build or mine there. Is that right? Uh, yes, that seems to be correct. Yeah, so right now I'm in, I'm in creative mode, am I? No, let me give myself a creative mode for a sec. So I'm in creative mode. So let me try and destroy this block here. No, I can't. So this area is protected. Well, let's see. I mean, um, I want to congr congratulate AS uh, with a victory, but only after. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, so we need a TNT. We need a TNT and we need uh, flint, um, flint and steel. Flint okay, and steel. let's That's try fast. it. <laughs> this is going to happen let's live. See. Let's see if it's a legitimate strategy. I mean, you can still place the block nearby. You don't have to place it on top. You can place it nearby. And yes. Okay. So that one. Confirms it then. Yep. Here you go. The flag is exposed now. So it confirms the theory that this is a legitimate strategy. Congratulations to the Anglo-American School of Sofia for developing this amazing strategy and using this in game. It is. It is acceptable. You can see the flag is now exposed. You can use the TNT. You can blow this off. And <laughs> this is this is what I love about this map is that every time the team just come up with insane strategies. So we're going to go into the third game to see what's going to happen there. We're going to take a short break and, and be uh, there for the third game. <laughs>
sorry about that. We are we had <laughs> we had a long discussion with players and coaches about what we've seen in the second game with the lava strategy, and we have decided that uh, while it is a legitimate strategy from what we look from what we see, it is that you can, it, you can still destroy with a TNT. There is a question as to how fast you can get the TNT and whether or not this breaks the entire game by by destroying the flag. So there are, there are speculations we need to s we need to further see and decide whether this strategy can be used. So the conclusion we have is we still going to honor the AAS Sofia for pulling this off and we will keep the point for them in the second game, but we will tr we will ask them not to use the strategy in the third game. We're now preparing for the third match and we'll be live in a second. break. Um, as you understand, we've had a very long discussion with both teams around how legitimate was strategy uh, with Lava. So it's a really tough call. Um, just making sure that 
the coaches have the right privileges. Yeah. Um, okay, looks like we have uh, some technical problems with connection. Several players are not able to join from the Frankfurt School. Yeah, I think we need we might need to restart the round because our players from the FIS are not able to join us. Yeah, I think we need to restart the match. Yes. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> We are back into the game. Who? This is exhausting. <laughs> even to even to commentate, let alone players who are playing under lots lots of pressure, lots of lots of stress. Uh, we have to talk with both teams about the legitimacy of the uh, strategy that we've used before. We agree that it takes a little bit of time to to realize to, for us to to finally decide whether we can use it again. So we are asking kindly as team not to use the strategy again until we decide whether it is legitimate or not. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third game of the Capture the Flag um, International Schools International Schools Esports League. This is the decisive game to decide which team will carry the title of the champions. Uh, we are ready to start. No more uh, destructions or no more unbeatable strategies. We are ready to start and <coughs> Uh, forgot one thing. Hey, Mark. My son is here. Sorry, Mark. Say hi to everybody. Okay, Michael, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, wonderful. Are we gonna start the game now? Function, start, and here we go. Ooh, Michael, what would you do in my if you were in my place? Would you count this as a legitimate strategy or not? Because I was really hard wow. pressed to answer this. 
Yeah, no, that is a tough one, Evgeny. I think um, it, I agree with you. It does need a bit more discussion and consideration. It is the first time that this has happened. Uh, so I think to take a quick decision at this stage is unfortunately uh, perhaps uh, not possible. So I agree. Maybe a, a discussion needs to be had uh, after the tournament. Yeah. Brilliant. It looks like we are good to go. And we see the red team immediately charging for the blue base. Uh, let's see if blue can hold them off. Uh, we also notice a uh, red team that looked like they're going to fill his outpost, but uh, they decided to also go to blue base and a uh, blue team member also going into red base. So it looks like both teams are playing very offensively right from the start. Yeah, well, they, the stakes are really, really high now. Both teams are... Uh... Yeah, this is this is really really tough. Uh, the on one hand, AS understands that the um, the Frankfurt International School can use the same strategy that that they use in the first two matches. And th they they now unfortunately their hands are tied in terms of their lava strategy. Though when I talk to them, they they've had they have a couple other things, couple other means to to win the game. But still, you know, having this pressure. Uh, at the back of your head that the, the other team will again evolve at the 10 minute mark with two diamonds this is really tough this is really really tough and they have to respond they have to act really really quickly yeah absolutely so i think the a is uh as we said before they're extremely skilled at the pillages outpost uh, so perhaps that can count in their favor uh although the germany team fis uh if they have that armor it becomes very difficult to stop them. Yeah, listen, Jan, thanks for bringing this up. Yeah, the pillager outpost, I think, is one of the ways how AS can counter that because one of the spawns at the at, at the pillager outpost is in fact a diamond sword. You can even have the tri tri uh, trident there if you're really lucky. And we see a little skirmish is going to take in place here between AS and the. FIS, the blue player, so the AS to the nine was able to take down the player, but now the FIS knows that AS is trying to take the pillager outpost, and I think they'll maybe send a, a little dispatch there to prevent them from doing that. Uh, it's interesting, not a lot happening in the bases, uh, although it looks like the blue defense around the flag has been set up. Uh, red is still busy doing that, so We'll keep an eye on the defenses as well. Looks like another red player going for the pillagers outpost. Uh, although there is a player already, student nine is approaching the top corner, uh, the top layer of the pillagers outpost. Another red player coming up, uh, trying to counter the blue, and we've got a blue and red 1v1 on top of the pillagers outpost. Red winning there. And red just defeated oh no. another red coming up and taking that precious loot. Yeah, they have the loot was the diamond sword for the FIS. It was a diamond sword, and um, I believe there was there was another stone sword or something. Well, we can see student four is approaching student eleven. This is going to be a very faithful moment for student eleven because he might be on low health. He has he has lots and lots of loot. Why didn't he? Yeah, he's oh no, he now lost the position. I wonder why that student didn't wear that's the diamond sword right there all it took was just equip this diamond sword and fight the student four so student four is at the top floor he's just checking that the chest is there he's going to use the ender pearl to evacuate will he i think he should now student 15 is now yeah he's using the ender pearl the ender pearl is going to be thrown and let's see where he lands yeah, he lands right there what a wonderful throw wow. just from the pillage outpost right to the um, to the roof of their house. So the AS now has the chance, like you, like you mentioned, Michael, you've, you are mentioned that now that they have Pillage Outpost, they do have Diamond Sword, they do have some resources to counter the mining strategy demonstrated by FIS in the previous two games. Uh, and that's a huge advantage. I mean, we're one or two minutes into the game and really they've got powerful armor uh, and weapons. So uh, if they want to make this count, they've got to charge... Uh, and really go for red base as soon as possible to prevent uh, the FIS team from getting that armor yeah. from the mines. Yeah, I agree. This is exactly what should be happening now. They need to realize they only have every minute counts now, really. They have to make sure that 
they score as many points as possible before the FIS gets the possession of the two diamond suits. I mean, we all anticipate that because I only see three, again, we only see three players, three active players from the FIS team, meaning that two other players are down into the mines getting those available diamonds. So we still, yeah, we see uh, player nine. I think this is, this is the player who's carrying the diamond armor, sorry, the diamond sword. They also have ender pearls, which can make the scoring point much, much more quickly. And that was demonstrated by FIS in one of the previous games where they just simply they threw the ender pearl all the way from the flag and then just scored this in a matter of seconds. Uh, so I see three players uh, very cleverly infiltrating the red base from multiple sides, uh, sneaking up using that stealth mode. Uh, and I think they might be able to get the flag. The question is, can they get out quick enough? Yeah, and look at that. I like how student 14 and 15 from FIS, they understand they cannot engage student nine heads on. They only have wooden swords, whereas student uh, the other student had the diamond, uh, diamond sword. So they, they bow him down a little bit. And now he's trying to get down. Oops. He's trying to get down. I wonder where other side, the ender pearl has been thrown. The flag is going to be captured. But then he, oh no, he, he jumped in too late. Have you seen that, Michael? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, just, just out of time there. Yeah. Uh, not enough time to get that flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I think he, the moment he landed on the flag, he, the flag dropped on the ground and then at that point and the pearl landed somewhere so the timing wasn't good it takes some practice uh it takes some practice doesn't it uh so yeah and you are award you are rewarded for this practice but now that the point is still not captured the uh, the anglo-american school of sofia is losing those valuable moments in, at the early stages of the game so the moment we see the two diamond chest plates and two iron so two diamonds this is the it could be the end for the AS Sophia, so they have to act really quickly. The outpost will respond in one minute, giving AS Sophia another chance to another chance to capture the flag. We can see one of the players actually of the AS Sophia is trying to get the way out, and the flag is going to be captured. No, yeah, a fight there happening. Uh, unfortunately, that's a no for the blue team. Yeah, nice yeah. save by the red team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now actually the, the blue team played really well before capturing the flag. They made sure that the the uh, escape route is clear, but then they got spotted. Uh, I still, I wonder where the player with the diamond sword, we still haven't seen any influence being made with the power of the diamond sword, unfortunately. I'm wondering if they're not keeping it perhaps for later on in the game uh, when the red team comes up with the uh, diamond armor. You never know. Uh, maybe afraid to lose it early game. Probably, yeah, that's a good point as well. They, maybe they understand, well, let's keep it until the late game. And, and the pillager outpost now spawns one more time. And the, if AS is careful enough, they now have the diamond sword that they can use to just p capture the outpost one more time. They can do it with no time. And I think this is exactly what is happening now. We can see three players are, are exiting the base and student, uh, student nine is now... Oh, what is that? Also, uh, we can see, well, I'm just seeing a bucket of lava being shared by student seven. Um, now student nine is now in the possession of the bucket of lava. We can see a little action is happening at the pillager outpost. Both teams are approaching pillager outposts from both sides. Yeah, it looks like the blue team uh, has got the upper hand here uh, with one of its players, member seven. In the iron armor, yeah, we can see them easily defeating the red player and now going up into the pillager's outpost, uh, getting that valuable loot in, uh, at the upper level. Yeah, we can see two, uh, one of the players, student 14, is now advancing from the FIS. They're advancing towards the pillager outpost. That They understand they, they've got to stop it. I mean, yes, you have two uh, players who are mining, but you cannot just ignore the fact that the other team is simply taking the second pillager outpost within the game time. Although it looks like they are ignoring it for now. Uh, blue team very okay. easily defeating that outpost. Uh, unfortunately, it's just iron. It's the iron chest. They have uh, the oh. iron sword, the stone sword, 
and two sets of um, iron ingots, which is enough to craft some armor and swords. And if you are careful enough and, and skillful, you can still leverage the iron swords to take down those players in diamond. The score is still zero to zero. Yeah, that's an interesting game. Yeah, I can see blue team has really uh, put a lot of effort into the fence of their flag. Um, so let's see if that can hold up. Red team not really advancing at this stage. One of the blue players, our player seven, is now in the base. He he got spotted by two players. Player eleven, um, a fight is going to take place. I'll try to follow them. Though they're inside now, so I cannot really see it. Okay, student seven uh, is using his diamond, is his iron sword. The flag is now captured. The uh, door is now taking down. The front door is taking down. Student seven is carrying the flag. They're not going to use the and the pearls. There's no one chasing them, so it's a easy point for the blue team the question is though whether or not this will be enough uh the base has yeah. been set on fire as well uh we can see the uh spawn and the uh, uh, sorry the the base is now set on fire and just to clarify um some players try to swim in lava i think that might be down in the mines if you ask player 11 wait a second player 11 yeah this is uh those players are from the Frankfurt International School. Player 11, I mean, above 10, those players are from the Frankfurt International School. So I wonder if those two players... Okay, the flag is captured and the pearl is being thrown and the player is teleported. This is going to be the third point for the S. Things are starting to look really good for the S. Sophia, they got a three-point lead. They set the base of the FIS on fire. Again, just to clarify for the audience, this is not considered uh, a illegitimate strategy. You can still uh, build the base. You can rebuild the base and prevent your players from falling when you spawn. So they need to do that SAP uh, because... Uh, I mean, you do take lots and lots of damage when you fall down. Uh, they placed the cobweb. I didn't think about that. So, Michael, if you see at the red base, at the spawn, they placed the cobweb so that when you fall down, you don't take damage. Pretty skillful, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Uh, a lot of pressure now on the red team. And a blue team knows this is now their window of opportunity. They need to make every point count before that armor arrives in the red team's hands. Yeah, you're right. I mean, every minute counts. Uh, the red team is now, I can see, they, we still haven't seen, I mean, we see four players, three players are still, we can, I mean, for the whole duration of the game, we've only seen three players from the red team. And now they're advancing. The flag is going to be captured for the red team. They just decided, let's go, let's do it, let's go for it. And now they're fighting in the blue team's base. And here yeah, you, you go. You can see a red team member struggling to get out. Uh, blue team's defense is holding up. Um, and yes, you're correct, that armor is now surfaced. Wonderful throw by student 13. Uh, they captured the player who was carrying uh, ender pearls, and that's that the ender pearl was used. And now it's three points. The red team scores their first point, and now there's only two point difference. I lost track of time, but I believe it's we have fewer than our two minutes remaining. The fire has been set. Uh, around the flag. I wonder what this will do. Apparently, all the blocks going to melt down. Uh, that's an interesting strategy. Uh, I think it might make it a bit more difficult to get to the flag. Uh, yeah. Because underneath the flag, there is bedrock. Yeah, I think it's going to make it difficult to get out. Like, uh, if you see, I mean, uh, maybe not. Uh, not sure. Not sure what's going to happen there, but I think... I think, I think the blue team has a plan. Again, we agree that using the strategy is, th their first strategy is not a legitimate way. So they're now trying to, we can see a major team fight is happening. The red player is taking down. Oh, look at that. Play It'll be difficult. Yeah, that's very skillful. Oh no. Use the sword. Okay. Let's see if the diamond sword will do the trick. Blue team uh, being chased around. And player 12 and now in position of the flag. Let's see if he can get out of there quick enough. And there's no one to contend, no one to stop uh, that team member from actually scoring a point. So you can see two 
uh, team members from Red Team. Now in the Diamond Armor, we did expect to see this. Um, so now I wonder if the other team can respond quick enough and actually gain possession of that valuable armor and diamond sword. Yeah, you're right. And I st we still haven't seen the uh, the diamond sword that the AFI AAS got from the first pillager outpost. Well, what is happening here? We can see our student uh, are now using lava in the in the fights. Um, so student twelve is here. They try they try to to set the student twelve on fire. The blue team now captures the flag. Now student twelve. He's on fire though. He was quick enough to get into the water and put out this fire. So that was one of the strategies I think the AAS has how to counter. Student 12 must be on low health. He's running away. He was. That's yeah, he must be on low. He's very cautious. Yeah, he's very cautious. But at the same time, I think that was the. That was, I think, the plan for the lava buckets because we, we, we saw they try they try to set that player on fire because it's really, really hard to to fight them. But yeah, this is the first time we've seen where student 12 was like, oh, I need to be more careful. So student 12, student eight is trying to get to the flag. We'll try to follow them, follow them because the red team left their base uh, un attended and now we can see one of the players is going to get to the flag the red team captures the flag the blue team will capture the flag in response though i think the difficult task for the ass will be to get back so they have their flag though maybe going through the front door wasn't front door wasn't the best solution because they are the flag oh whoa, how the flag is now rescued uh, oh they made it <laughs> wow Student A, like yeah, they made it, but it's still um, the FIS. They're gonna even the score in just a second and bring it to the overtime. Yeah, I think blue team realizes now their defenses are shattered. Uh, the only thing they can do now is to get as many points as possible by sneaking into the red base. Yeah, student twelve is there. He's he's alone in the corner. He's cornered, and now the whole team is going to is going to get him. And is it gonna be enough? No, it's not going to be enough. One more player, student two is here. And student 12, he's running away. He must be on low health, but then re reinforcement is here. And the red team scores the point in five to four. And the t red team is going to be scoring another point in a second. Oh, man, what a, what a, what an intense match. Uh, I can only imagine the pressure on the AS team. Uh, absolutely nerves of steel. Uh, to fight against two players with diamond armor is no mean feat. Uh, it takes incredible coordination to get hold of that diamond armor and kill one of those players, let alone two. And it's interesting to see how the red team is working together. Uh, so to make sure not to lose that very valuable armor, um, always someone there to protect them. Yeah. Yeah, it's becoming very difficult now for the blue team uh, to fight back because their defenses are gone. Uh, they do not have uh, valuable resources anymore. Um, and now to try and take down two players with diamond armor uh, is nearly impossible. And out of experience, I know this is a very difficult situation to be in. Yeah. So we have a four point lead. Oh, we see our one of the players one of the red team, one of the blue players is actually carrying the flag. You can see them on the left hand side. They are going to score the point in a second, which will bring the score of the blue team to five, but it's still not enough. Yeah, I think that's the probably point? the only strategy wow. they have going for them now. Yeah, because the uh, the red team, they just left two players there. They left their flag unattended and the blue team realizes, hey guys, okay, you're going to leave in our base? Okay. So what we're going to do, we will just carry as many flags as possible and just jump from the top so that you cannot. Yeah, the flag has been has been rescued. I wonder yeah, if yeah, I wonder what AS could have done differently in this match to make sure that they have enough points uh, before the uh, FIS develop their strategy. Yeah, uh, very good question, because uh, as I said at the start, the pillagers outpost seemed like the uh, the most probable way to um, defeat the red team. But unfortunately, it was just a little bit uh, too late. 
uh, that they started scoring points before the diamond arm appeared. Yeah. I mean, I think as we should give them the credit, they try their best. They they try to uh, set the fire on the players with the with the diamond, and they almost succeeded. I mean, at one point we saw student twelve getting behind the tower behind the tree. So if only there were one player who could take him down while he was in low health. And this is going to be the end for the match. And this is going to be a victory for the Frankfurt International School of uh, Frankfurt International School. Well done, guys. Wonderful match. Uh, what a finals. Exactly how they should be, right? Fantastic work from both teams. Amazing strategies. Well done. Thank you, Evgeny. That's been an absolute privilege hosting the last uh, finals match with you. I've uh, really enjoyed it. Welcome to both teams. An amazing, amazing final match. Brilliant work to both teams. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael, for joining me for the for the co-commentating. I think we'll make it a standard practice going forward uh, where we have uh, more than one commentator. Hopefully next time we'll, we'll get some students participate as well. Sounds fantastic. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Bye. All right. What a game. Uh, fantastic. So we are going to join both teams one more time for the post game interview. So stay tuned. We'll chat with, uh, with both teams one more time. So I'm just getting okay. Oh, what a um, finals. Wow. We've seen some crazy strategies, but we've never seen <laughs> lava being poured down before. So yeah, this is uh, this is how the game evolves really. And this is the beauty, excuse me, of the, this is the beauty of the, uh, of this match is that you never know what's going to happen. You never know which strategy uh, those teams are going to, are going to throw on you. Right, so we are going to join the Anglo-American School of Sofia first for the post-game interview, so let's stay tuned. Hello. Hey, uh, Hello. hey guys, uh, it's good to Hello. talk. It's good talking to you again. It's <laughs> it looks like this match, like ma any, not many others, we, we, we talk a lot. So, um, I just want to hear your thoughts around the game in general. How, what do you think went not so well in the third match and what prevent you from winning the third match? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I can answer Pro this one. I, I'm pretty sure it's kind of the elephant in the room. It's the diamond armor strategy was crazy good. It was very impressive. The way that they were able to do it, we tried to target their miners, but the route was, since we don't know where it is, it was quite hard to do that. So very big props to the diamond armor people that was a crazy good strategy and uh in the end it was very hard to fight against two fully diamond people <laughs> yes and i can see comments just in the live stream from matt draper who said that if diamond armor is fair the other strategy which i think your strategy should be fair as well yeah and yeah. Uh, and I understand. I mean, at the back of my head, I, th I was thinking like, yes, if you had used that again, maybe that could have scored you the yeah. victory. And I can only appreciate your patience and, uh, you know, your sportsmanship that none of you brought it up at the end of the game. You know, you didn't mention this now. So I can only appreciate your level of maturity to understand why you were asked not to use that. And uh, I can, my hat's off to you, you know, guys, you, you made my day yeah. today with coming up with this wonderful strategy. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Any other comments from any other players, please? Um, yeah. never. Mind. You can go. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really impressive. Just all the strategies that are coming up, and I mean, I get it. Whenever when something's new, it's also important to like make sure that it's not going to break the game. I mean, in the past, we sort of had stuff that did, and it's it's okay that yeah, stuff like that happens. Jonah, my son. Uh, I'm drowning right now. I can't. Oh, Jonah, go. <laughs> At the end, I'm ca I, I was kind of felt like it's unfair because even though they won, they were ke keep kept complaining that we were cheating because we broke oh, their spawn. Yeah. But like we weren't really. <laughs> I'm proud of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just to, and just to just to confirm one more time, your strategy did not break the game, and I just want to reiterate yep. that. So it did not break the game. It's just take look at it this way: it's so innovative 
that we don't know how to deal with this. And I was talking to the other team, and I, I hopefully you're watching this now. Please look up the Dick Frosbury. So Dick Frosbury was the high jump uh, athlete who mm -hmm. in, in 1968, he re revolutionized the high jump. Now we see all players who are doing the high jump, they're jumping with their back facing the, the, the bar. Before him, everyone was f jumping with their face facing the bar. And he was like, I'll do it this way. And he broke the record and now it considered the standard. So you guys, in a sense, did that today. You did something that other teams thought about, but they didn't dare to do that. And you executed that, you risk. I, I, I saw that it was a risky. So you should be proud of yourself. You know, you will remember this moment. I, at least I will remember. So we are proud of we are proud of you. I'm proud of your team as well. And you led it on the second place as well. So bravo to you. This hand of applause is especially for your team, for your courage and perseverance. Yes. And um, we will be next back next year. So <laughs> this is not the end. <laughs> there's still a hope yes and, and just to give you a heads up like every it's it has become a tradition really that every at the end of each season we are uh, talk to the players talk to the coaches to the teams and we preparing in preparation for the next season we pr we develop a new patch so uh, just to give you a heads up i'm pro most probably the ability to trade with uh, some kind of an in-game trader will be introduced. So there are other ways to win the game other than mining because it looks like what, we've, what we've seen so far is that the mining strategy seems to dominate the capture the flag. Whoever can master the diamond strategy so wins the game. So my intention is to introduce the patch where you can still... Um, there are other means like you capture the pillager outpost the first time there was a diamond sword if there was a trident in the second pillager outpost there is a chance to get a trident that you you, you might have had an, a good chance if there are al also a possibility to buy things uh, like uh, after you let's say kill another player or slay another player or capture the point so you've been rewarded and there's a chance to counter mining strategy as well well if you make a if you patch the putting lava on the on the flag in the spawn, name it the AAS Sophia rule. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think we have to we have to determine. Let's say if uh, if we introduce the traders in the game, and one of the items you can buy is TNT, and it's priced relatively high, so it's not easy to get. Then it becomes a legitimate strategy where the other team yeah. cannot just go and mine and w and and win the game by mining because you need to prepare for different occasions. You know. Yes, you went mining and you are prepared to fight, but the other team develop a strategy where you need something else and not uh, diamond swords and armors because at this stage of the game, it almost, not almost automatically, but it guarantees a victory most of the time. Yeah. I love how player and 12 just got killed by an endermite and a couple of... Yeah, okay. So yeah. I just want to hear from your coach, uh, mm, uh, Dr. Horn, any comments, last comments for your team performance in this tournament oh, all season long i couldn't i couldn't have been happier to play with these guys they've uh, it's been the best part of my job for the last uh, few months and i'm really looking forward to doing it again um <clears throat> major props to all the other teams we played uh, every other coach i had communications with this has been super professional and um, we've come away just i think everybody's happy and everybody is saying that they want to play again so that's a really good sign of a good league so thank you so much to you uh evgeny for all your hard work and making it possible um it's been a great experience <laughs> great okay guys well we will we we'll still have the 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 game for the third place between nova and um uhs so there's still one match to view and then looking forward to inviting you uh, for the uh, fall league, there will also be certificates of participation, and you guys scored the landed of the second place. Th th there'll be a way to recognize that as well going forward once we finish the the, uh, the league this fall. This uh, sorry on Monday. So yeah, I'll be in touch with you, Dr. Horn, to give you the certificate so you can uh, I don't know recognize your team uh, for the school. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, fantastic. Let's now join uh, FIS to talk to the winners and championships of this tournament. Hello, um, FIS. <laughs> hey, how are you? 
<laughs> well, congratulations on winning the uh, winning the tournament for the second time in a row. Bravo to you. You guys perfected your mining strategy and it looks like it worked wonderfully. So I just want to hear from you about uh, how you felt in the third match. Did everything go according to the plan? And was there any moment where you were like, oh, oh my God, I think we're losing this? I think at the beginning we struggled to uh, mine. We had some uh, mining problems um, while we were mining, um, but other for at least the mining side, I think that was about it. And everything else went to plan. So, uh, yeah, we usually split up our our our, 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 our team members into like two groups: uh, one that goes mining and one that goes and does all the stuff above ground in the, in the start of the game. And we we had to like. We had to. Um, there was lots and lots of chaos in the in the mining mining chat. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think at some point there was a notification in the game that one of the players tried swimming in lava. Was it one of you? Uh, yes, that that was that 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 was uh, at our spawn, though it wasn't in the mines. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, there was lava at the spawn, but I, I'm happy that you that you fixed that with the cab, cab web. That was that was a good done. Well done. Okay. So, um, anything from uh, Mr. Mr. Um, uh, Anderson? Anything from from you, uh, Mr. Wafa? Are you there? He he was having some uh, internet issues earlier. Okay. So All right. Yeah. Okay, great. So, listen. Um, I hope I hope that the the second match and the strategy by the Anglo American School of Sofa did not turn you off from the from the tournament and participating in the pat in the future. Like I said, it's it's something that we need to get our head around and see how we can fix that in the future. Whether it is a legitimate strategy to use in the future or not, and how future patches can can uh, on one hand uh, balance the game, but on the other hand, do not limit the creativity and you know innovation that that you guys bring to the game I, I, i'm quite happy they come come up with uh new ideas it's it's always good to like bring something new to the table okay all right so um yeah listen i'm looking forward to uh seeing you in the fall league when we start this again uh there will be a new patch rolling out this summer where we'll introduce new things and and, and hopefully fix some of the things that we see as overpowering uh in the in the current state of the game I'd like uh, to thank the other team too for playing. It was it was a good game. Was yeah, it was <laughs> it was very very intense. <laughs> it was very intense <laughs> indeed. All right, we went for two straight two hours. I think it's it's about the time we say goodbye. Uh, I'll be reaching out back once we are uh, have our final match on Monday for the third place between Nova School and UHA School. Uh, I'll be we will be distributing the certificates and there'll be a special uh, reward and award for your team as a winner of the tournament. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you. Have a wonderful thanks, rest thanks of the day. Organizing. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, that's it for the finals. Thanks for watching us till the end. We still have viewers who are hanging around. Maybe this is some players. Maybe there's some external viewers. Thank you all. Uh, it's been two hours. Uh, this is probably the longest match we've had so far. Um, yeah, thank you all. Thank you all. We will still have another match for the final, for the third place, uh, which was going to happen on Monday or Tuesday. We still don't know. And then we'll be getting ready for the uh, fall league. Uh, major changes going to take place in the capture the flag map. Uh, we've seen some wonderful plays, uh, some wonderful strategies this time around. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, we are going to end the live stream now. That was the International Esports, International Schools Esports League. And join us again for the third place. And if you want to participate, reach out to me uh, through um, Instagram or Twitter. Uh, and then we'll plug you in and your students to this wonderful, wonderful league. Thanks all. We're going to end now. Bye-bye. <laughs>